and we're live to review Counterfeit with his Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll counterfeit, just... Counterfeit, was that what it was called? <laughs> yes. Okay. Counterfeit. And I'll just put on screen for the folks a summary. It's a little bit of a... When they give like, these teasers for what a story is about, like, they give away a little bit too much information sometimes. And this now, one then goes crazy and destroys everyone. <laughs> but so, Jeff, does this name ring a bell, Peter and Helides? Um, maybe. But I could be thinking of somebody else. Because uh, mm. you, you know there's a crossover with these Blake Seven and Doctor Who people. Oh, yeah, some of the same writers for Big Finish. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that? Tell me about that there. Where's the... Oh, there's the CD case. I'm preoccupied. Right. Let's get this in here. Right. So, uh, what do you think then, Jeff, of what you've listened to? What do I think? Yeah. Um, I think that I would uh, gladly uh, substitute Jenna for Serve Land any time. Yes, I would as well. And the Avon for Travis is, is a pretty is a pretty good trade too. Yeah, especially when it. I mean, Travis one was okay, but he got a bit. Yeah, uh, Travis one was a little more believable. They just kind of they didn't give him a whole lot of good stuff to do, but mm. uh, yeah, the character was had potential. Yeah. They, they kind of made the second one a little bit too melodramatic, comic book villain kind of. But then they did the same thing with Serverland, just mm. even worse over time. <laughs> Travis was mercifully killed at the end of the second season, and she just got worse <laughs> in the final season. Yeah. I mean, part of it was that working her into the plots and not killing her, a personal shield would have helped. Where they shoot her and then it bullet bounces off. And he says, Do you think I'd be stupid enough to turn up here without a personal shield? Right. <laughs> right, a little yeah. bit. So, so, actually, the notes. Uh, oh, dear, that's done it twice. Right. I don't know. Any of these names, just your general names, just sort of stick out. Your yeah, Alistair Law. That's probably that's one of those name British names I've always liked is Alistair. We don't we don't have like we don't have that name in this country. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of any American named Alistair before. It's quite a Scottish name. Uh, it makes me think of uh, the uh, the masterpiece theater host. His and name then, was Alistair, wasn't it? And then we've got Lisa Bowerman and Justin Richards. Yeah, those Bowerman's definitely one that's done Doctor Who stuff also. And Nicholas Briggs has, of course, too. Right. And, of course, B7 Media own the rights to Blight 7, not the BBC. Well, I mean, I would, what I'd say about this is that it was another kind of convoluted story that was kind of hard to follow and a lot of sort of, again, let's introduce, a, you know, guest characters that kind of don't really amount to much. Uh but as usual, the the performance and the voices of uh, the you know the two main actors were good. You know, mm -hmm. they sound good reading anything, even if the story's not particularly great. <laughs> and it's almost as if Paul Darrow is putting in a bit more effort than he did in season D, <laughs> where sometimes he would go, yeah. as you said, Captain Kirk. Yeah, I think so. It sounds like he's taking this more seriously, and not. You know, he's not hamming it up or anything. Well, I'll leave that on screen a little bit. So this is sort of gives you an idea of why the people liked it at the time.
Well, reading that just reinforces to me that, you know, Doctor Who had the exact same issue when it came to budgets, but overall their stories were better. So I, I, I don't <laughs> I don't take the low budget as an excuse for, you know, for to me what was poor quality in, in the writing. Um, so, you know, it ta- he's, what he says about what matters was the characters and the stories, I agree. Uh, I'm, I don't, uh, you know, I don't judge something on lack of effects. You know, there were even some things in like Seven or Doctor Who that people made fun of for being bad effects that, you know, to me, I didn't really mind that at all. To, if, if the story is fun and entertaining, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there are some cool effects I've liked, but you know, I've n- I've never held low budgets against a show. You know, I might laugh at something if it looks particularly ridiculous, but it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't mean I go, oh well, this story is terrible because of this bad effect. So. And of course, the great thing about audio stories like this one is that uh, you can imagine things looking as whatever you want to. So. Mm. And obviously, I disagree with him about Serlin. <laughs> yes. And still don't really understand why she was popular. Yeah. But hey, you know, everybody's got their own taste. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm outside the norm on a lot of those. I never thought Cindy Crawford was that attractive either. And she was like, in the 90s, she was like the go-to yeah. example of hotness or whatever. So... But, um, yeah, when it comes to, like, villainous females in sci-fi shows, my favorite is still Diana from V. I think she was, she was the best. Still there, Ben? Yes, uh, have you completed yeah. it? Jeff? Have I completed what? The reading it. Oh, yeah, I read most of it. Kind of skimmed it. Okay. Um, uh, this thing here. I think you would quite like this. Uh, softly, softly, task force. Because the main star of this was that guy that you like. Uh, the guy in uh, games, Stratford Johns. You know, played the older guy, and he had that oh. funny laugh. That guy. And uh, well, I don't know that I would necessarily like a show just because he was the main guy, but uh, but but yeah, um, d- detective series. But yeah, I mean, if you just have a look on uh, like YouTube, if you just like see like Z Cars, Stratford Johns. You'll see, like, what a good actor he was. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't watch the series, but but you can see you can see his acting quality, and it was because that was like the first British crime show that was like realistic and not a little bit twee. Like there was something before that that was a bit twee that ran for about fifteen years called Dixon of Doc Green. Can you can you translate twee into American? I don't, I don't twee, know. uh, twee. <laughs> Let's all look in the Ben's dictionary for twee. Is it like is it like cheesy or? Yeah, a little bit. It's like a little bit, uh, twee, uh, old fashioned. Okay. Uh, old, uh, old fashioned, oh, sort of like harmless, very. Uh, so not like the opposite of gritty. Yes. <laughs> what you're saying. Yes. Very good. Very good. Yes. The opposite <laughs> of gritty. Whereas Zed Cars was like realistic, I suppose, much more harder edged uh, for the time. Gotcha. And, and and like his character, he played like he was like the hard man detective in. That would like really like apparently interrogate uh, the suspects. Right, so uh, so we've done that. So let's let's. 
Have you given your review? Have you done all of your review? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I didn't really have like any kind of fancy review. Right. Right. Um, like, I, I made okay, some I'll comments. <laughs> what would you give it out of ten? Oh, uh, I guess about a four. Yes. Yeah, uh, with me, it's when it's these things where it's like go down to a planet and it's prisoners in a mine. That I find a bit repetitive because it reminds me of Horizon, where it's like, oh, you got people in it. Like, like that was that monoplasium stuff where they're mining something, and so that gets a bit. Uh, yeah, I, I I know you're limited when you have the Companion Chronicles type thing where you only got two, the main characters' voices available. But to me, in, given that scenario, then it should be more of the. You know, you create a conflict between Blake and Avon, and you play yeah. with that. You have yeah, not enough Avon. Going on. Yeah, in, instead of having uh, so much attention on the random new characters that are only going to be in this episode and really aren't that interesting. I mean, they could have had them like, there is like a duo. Like, like, for instance, that first one, where it was Avon and Villa were together a lot of the time, and you got right. a lot of interplay. Yeah, that was better because there was more interaction between them and... And uh, the setup with the like other android and stuff was more interesting. Yeah. This this would be one of my lower scores. I'd probably give this about I'd probably give this about a five because. I'm not particularly enthused about listening to it again or anything like that. So, and so, yeah, what I wrote down in my diary, uh, uh, that was a big nothing burger. Because it's like, it didn't advance like anything on. Burger. And of course, that's the problem when you like <laughs> set things. But <laughs> what you, we think Homer Simpson would go like that. <laughs> nothing burger. And then he would realize, hang on a minute. I'll yeah, at the barbecue place we went earlier, they, they had on the menu that one of their available meats was a white piece of paper. <laughs> They'd stuck it over whatever meat they were out of, I guess. So like, oh, I'll take the white piece of paper meat. That sounds awesome. Or maybe nothing burger, zero calories. <laughs> yeah. Zero calories, uh, oh. zero taste. We're out. <laughs> the only thing we have left are nothing burgers. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, folks, because Jeff's All got right. Jeff's got something to watch, and there's nothing much more to say about this. So join us next time for whatever the next one is, because I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye, folks. Bye.